These are the best settings in Modern Warfare 2. Yo, what's up? It's Elusive. If you guys are looking for settings that'll turn you guys into gods, then this is the video for you. But before I get into the video, if you guys are interested in best class ups, tips and tricks, how to get better, best settings in nuclear gameplay, and the camo grind in Modern Warfare 2, then subscribe, because I'm going to be posting up that content for the next two years since Modern Warfare is a two year life cycle. Later on during the game's life cycle, these settings might be tweaked or something, so I'll do a settings updated video later on during the game's life cycle, but as of right now, these are the best settings, no cap. Well, for me. And yeah, if you guys enjoyed the video, don't forget to drop a like because it helps out the channel. But yeah, let's get into the settings. Alright, we're in the settings. I'm using a controller, so this is going to be mostly for controller settings, not mouse and keyboard. I don't use mouse and keyboard, so if you have mouse and keyboard, this is probably not the video for you, my guy. Alright, for the edit button layout, I'm running tactical. You guys can run tactical if you like. I feel like tactical is just very efficient for me. Definitely since, you know, uh, the slide was always good, but the slide's not very good in Modern Warfare 2. So you guys can go stick and move. The reason I'm not going to go stick and move is because I've been playing tactical since Modern Warfare 2019. But uh, I was playing stick and move for BO4 and before that. The reason I changed because the slide became more efficient and it felt more useful because of slide canceling and everything like that. So that's why I went tactical. But since slide is not as useful, you can go to stick and move. The reason I'm keeping tactical is because I have an elite controller and I just have my paddles for my jump. I have my left paddle as slide as well as my stick. I kind of use my analog to slide and I use my left paddle to dive. So I don't have to press down on my analog and slightly throw off my accuracy. Because you know I have to press it down and sometimes you become less accurate because you have less control of the analog. So that's why when I use a dive I go for my paddle. And when I'm sliding I use the analog. And for my right paddle I have it as the jump. So that's why I still have tactical on. If you guys don't have like a controller with paddles like a scuff or an elite controller. Then you guys can go stick and move. Or you guys can keep it on tactical if you plan on using that um, animation cancel slide thing that they add. I don't know if they ever fixed it or not. Because I'm doing this as of the 25th. I'm recording this on the 25th. The campaign has settings. So all my settings were the same as the beta. So that's why I'm just doing the setting video now. So the moment the game drops, you guys have a settings video. Alright, scrolling down to the horizontal stick sensitivity. I run 7. And for the vertical, I run 6. This changes, I usually, between horizontal, I usually go between 8 and like 6. And for vertical, I usually go between 5 and 7. You can change it. These, I would say, use as default. So if you guys feel like it's a little too fast, and you can lower it. If you guys feel like it's too slow, you can higher it. It's just more of a default thing to help you guys out. Because this is perfect for me, but it might not be perfect for you. So that's why I say use my settings as like a default. If you guys don't really like something, then just slightly tweak it to your liking. I have 0.8, but I use the advanced settings, so that's going to be coming later on where I, when I get into more details about low zoom, high zoom, and three times multipliers with the scopes and all that. So that's going to be in the advanced side. I'm, I'm going to be getting to that in a minute, so just hold on. None of this I touched. I changed automatic sprint from off to automatic tactical sprint because I don't feel like giving my controller stick drift or breaking the analog for constantly pressing down on the analog and double tapping it then shifting it. I feel like that's just too much work and adding too much pressure on the analog and I feel like they break easier. So that's why I always go with automatic tack sprint rather than having it off. And it kind of works because when I was on Mono for 2019 I was slightly getting stick drift because I was pressing it too much so I kind of went to automatic and actually made my controller survive the entire life cycle so that's why I now run automatic tax sprint for that because I don't want to break my analogs fast all this is the same besides uh, the interact slash reload behavior I changed that to prioritize reload so if I have to interact or reload it will always prioritize my reload over the interaction unless you hold X if you hold X you'll interact before reloading but if you tap X or square then it'll reload instead of interacting so that's why i always go with this it's more useful and it's helpful because you don't want to accidentally like pick up someone's weapon or something when you're trying to reload this is why i run prioritize reload instead of interacting uh for the armor plate behavior i, I went to apply all all right let's get into the advanced settings for the aim assist type i went to black ops you guys can keep it on default run black ops or default if you plan on running like regular weapons but if you guys plan on using like snipers or something you can go with precision or focusing the reason being is because they're different precision and focusing only slow down on the player and black ops and default slow down when you're near the player i went to an extremely detailed video on this that i made back on cold war that information still applies to this because that information applied to modern warfare 2019 and everyone knows modern warfare 2019 dropped before cold war and vanguard applied in that as well so 
the aim response curve types are exactly the same. If you guys want to see a very detailed video and me describing it, then I'll leave that down in the comments or the description if you guys want to see that. But long story short, Black Ops and Default have a slowdown when you're near the player. Precision focusing slowdown only on player. So that's why it's very good for sniping. So when you shoot, it only goes to the opponent and you don't slightly miss because you're slowing down before you got to the opponent. But honestly, precision and focusing are for extremely accurate players. Alright, for the aim response curve type, this was also in the very detailed video as well. So I'm going to leave that down in the comments as I said before. But long story short, dynamic has the same rate as your analog. So slight movement on the analog will do slight movement in the game. Linear is the same, but the difference is linear is the same rate all the way across. Dynamic isn't. Dynamic kind of slows down and smoothens out as you go all the way across with your analog. So slight movements, like small movements, linear and dynamic instantly respond and move at the same rate as your analog. Dynamic slows down as you go all the way across. So if you go from left all the way to right type of thing or a 180 or 360 or whatever, it slows down and balances and smoothens out. Linear is kind of like the same rate all the way around. And standard has no reaction at all to slight movements really. And um, it speeds up as you go all the way around. So standard is kind of good for less accurate players or players that have like shaky hands or panic a lot because if you panic with dynamic, you'll pull off your opponent real easy, bro. And if you miss that one bullet, that one bullet is life or death in Modern Warfare since the time to kill is so high. So that's why when I was in the beta, I ran standard and dynamic. I switched back and forth because sometimes I felt like I would slightly touch my analog too much and it would make me miss a bullet and get me killed. And standard doesn't have that slight touch. You have to do a little bit more movement on the analog for the character to react in game. And that also, you know, does like the dead zones and stuff like that. If your dead zones are extremely high, that also is put into consideration as well. Or extremely low. But yeah, standard for less accurate players. Dynamic, it's the bridge between linear and standard. And linear, I honestly wouldn't even really recommend it. No cap. Alright, here's the advanced settings I was talking about for my ADS speeds like that for the custom sensitivity per zooms. This is where you go. It's in the advanced category. I changed this to 0.8. I didn't really touch any of the 0.2 or 3 or 4 or 5 or 6 zooms and stuff like that. The only thing I touched was the high zoom to a 1.10. This is for like snipers and stuff. You guys can adjust this. This honestly is what I say you should be when you're coming down to the ADS senses. Because this is extremely more helpful than the other version, the non-advanced one. Because you can specifically set each one. So if you guys feel like 0.10 or 1.10 is too fast for a 2.3 zoom you don't have to have it on 1.10 you can go to keep it at a 1.0 or you can go 0.90 or something like that so that's why this is where you want to be when you're adjusting your ads sensitivities but as of right now the only thing i touched was low zoom to a 0.8 and high zoom to 1.10 you guys can adjust this to your liking but that's what i'm running as of right now for my dead zones i run a 0.07 for left and right stick this will vary to your guys' controller. If you guys have like an older controller, you'll probably have it higher because you'll get stick drift. If you have a newer controller, you can run it lower. But this is what I was also talking about for the aim response curve types and stuff. We're also putting into consideration about this. Because if you have it high, then you have to do a little bit more force on the analog before it reacts. More distance, and that's what I was kind of explaining in the little photo. The bigger the circle, the more you have to move your analog to get out of the circle radius before the character reacts in-game type of thing so that's why you guys are going to want to test this out with your aim response curve types because if you have it extremely low it might be hard to control dynamic since dynamic moves at the same rate as your analog and if you have your dead zones extremely low with that you can kind of just be flying over your opponent no cap so that's why you guys want to adjust your dead zones and your aim response curve types and everything like that to your liking to where you can actually control it because if you can't control your accuracy then you're just going to get killed and what's the point of those settings but yeah for the left zoom max right zoom 0.99 left trigger right trigger this is how much force you have to put down on your triggers before they react in game i went to a 0.3 some people run 0.1 but i feel like that just reacts a little too fast this is my sweet spot yours can be 0.1 or it could be 0.5 or whatever just test this out as well scrolling down i know there's a setting in here where people are running so you guys can animation cancel your slide type of thing so in other words slide cancel but i'm not even gonna get into all that because i don't even know the settings and i really didn't Pay attention to all that but if you guys plan on running like a slide cancel then if i remember correctly it's something about ground mantle or automatic mantle off 
so for the first thing you have to turn off or adjust is the weapon mount activation you're going to want to go to ads only then the other things you want to turn off is ground mantle automatic airborne mantle and automatic ground mantle you're going to want to turn all those off and i didn't really find it as useful because you're doing all these extra animations just to slide cancel at that rate you might as well not even slide no cap and yeah i didn't change any of this down here all right, but onto the graphics, turn off motion blurs. There's no point of having them on. Honestly, I don't even know why they're in the game. I don't know if it's for like a, a campaign thing or whatever, but turn them off. Definitely, if you guys have motion sickness, no point of running this. Film grain, turn it off. You guys don't want to have that grainy look. The depth of field, turn it off. Um, I turned this on for the sharpness. I don't know if it actually works. I didn't really see a difference really when it came to the um, beta or maybe I didn't have my settings high enough to see a difference. But as of right now, I have it on and I have it at 11. Maybe it's supposed to be at like 25 or something. I don't know. But right now it's at 11. If I adjust this uh, once the game starts or whatever, then I'll leave it down in the comments or something. I have 120 uh, hertz on because I have the Series X and I run 14, 40, 120 hertz. So if you guys have a uh, 120 hertz access on console go 120 hertz because hertz is better than resolution honestly fill the view i run 107 honestly run anywhere between 100 to like 115 you really don't want to go to 120 you can if you'd like but i wouldn't recommend going under 100 no cap me personally i don't go under 105 but you know that could be different third person field of view i didn't even adjust this go to the max no cap if you're playing third person game mode this is will definitely be efficient so you guys can see around the corner without your character hitting around the corner type of thing so that's why you want to run with the max fov when it comes to third person oh yeah um for the ads field of view i didn't change this i left it on affected affected makes it to where you're at the same fov as when you're aiming in and out um independent kind of zooms your fov to like 80 which i think that's the original fov so kind of cut off a lot of your screen and your surroundings to where you won't see as much screen you can get just bodied from your right because you can even see the kid on the screen so that's why i always run affected over independent the weapon uh field view thing this is the new thing i know it wasn't working Working in the beta but if it is working now you can go with wide because it makes the weapon look smaller so if the weapon's smaller it actually makes the screen more wide but if they fixed it i'm probably going to stick with default or go wide because the weapon is smaller you'll get more background screen which means you'll be able to see your opponents better because the weapon is smaller and you get more screen rather than just staring at a gigantic weapon but I don't know if they actually fixed this or not. I think they said they did, but I'm not too sure. You guys can uh, test this out because I don't know if it makes the site smaller. If it does, then I'm definitely sticking with default because it's already hard as hell to see people as is because they literally got rid of nameplates and everything like that. And they just want you to strain your eyes at this point to see someone only 10 meters away. No cap. All right. Um, down here, the camera movement crap. They didn't have this in the beta for consoles. I'm glad they added this because I was kind of triggered when they didn't have it in the beta for console but they had it for pc it just didn't make sense to me because i don't remember seeing this if it was there let me know down in the comments but i'm 99 sure it was not there but you want to put both of them on 50 because it only goes to 50 this makes it to where your screen isn't shaking as much from bullets and grenades and crap so so definitely put this on 50 so you can stay more accurate and not have as much screen shake and for the brightness i have it on 50 i didn't really change it Going to the audio settings, I have it on headphone boost bass. This is the best one out of all of them, honestly. Master volume I have on 10. Music I have on 20. No real point to have the music loud. You can go to zero if you'd like. It's up to you. Dialogue I have on 70 because dialogue is important because they do callouts, but it's not as important as footsteps and explosions and things like that to let them know how close they are it's important but not as important as footsteps so that's why i have dialogue on 70 effects volume have it on 100 hit marker i have it on 100 i didn't touch any of this voice chat have enabled voice chat device bruh this right here is going to be important if you guys are content creators if you guys are like trying to record people's voices in game chat then you're going to want this on speakers but i don't know what's going on with modern warfare 2 the speakers does not work bro every time you enable it and you back out the settings and come back it'll have nothing linked at all bro like literally i'm gonna show you i'm gonna back out all right i backed out i'm gonna go back to it i'm gonna scroll down and as you guys see, nothing is linked again. I don't know what's going on with this. They need to fix this. They It was back in the beta too. So if anyone sees this, you guys can maybe tweet 
Infinity Ward or something telling them to fix this because if you have it on a headset, you're not capturing people's voices, but if you have it on speakers, you are. But I kind of did a workaround for this for Xbox. I don't know if this is on PlayStation as well. If it is, then uh, just follow along type of thing. So what you're going to want to do is set it on headset and then you're going to want to go to your console settings, not the in-game settings. All right, so I'm at my Xbox settings right now. I don't know where it is on the PS4, but where you want to go to is your volume and audio output. You're going to want to change both of these to stereo uncompressed. This makes it to where the audio goes to your monitor through your HDMI rather than to your headset. So that's why I had it on headset before. So that's why it literally wouldn't capture it. But after I went to stereo uncompressed, it allowed my HDMI to pick up the audio and it actually captured it in my Elgato. You could also click on audio setup and just click on it. And yeah, for the additional options, I don't know if any of this matters, but you guys can check this as well. I went to pass through and right here for the party chat output, I have it on headset and speaker. So if I'm in a party chat, my Elgato also picks up their voice because I think if it's only on headset, it doesn't pick up party chat. And yeah, that's the settings, the workaround to capture people's voices since the speaker setting is not working in Modern Warfare itself. But well, alrighty, back into the Modern Warfare settings. Scrolling down, I have it on auto connect to lobby so I don't have to do it manually because like I said, I like recording people's voices in game chat. It makes for better content when hearing people's reaction when you're bodying them and they rage. It's the funniest thing ever. So that's why I have it on auto connect to lobby. The hit marker sound effects, I have it on classic. You guys can keep it on MW. This is what it starts on for default. You can go to either one of these, but I just went to classic. I don't really, it doesn't really matter whatever one you choose. For interface, the only thing I believe I touched was a color customization. I went to filter two change it to both it went to 100 i felt like this made the the colors a little bit brighter and more vibrant so it kind of made it to where my opponents are a little bit more visible in my opinion so that's why i went to filter to change it to both and boost them both to 100 because i felt like it was a little bit too hard to see opponents and they're kind of blending in and they are also um when you had like a teammate and an enemy perfectly aligned they would have the blue name above their heads and you wouldn't even be able to tell they were enemies and stuff like that so i felt like this kind of helped you guys can change it to this i also changed the color setup you guys can keep it normal but i just had it as yellow for me darkish blue for my teammates i like a lime green for my party red for the enemies the neutral, I have it on uh, white as it always is. And for contested, for like when there's teammates and enemies on the same flag, I have it as pink. The reason I had it as pink because it stands out. All right, scrolling down. I didn't change any of this. All right, uh, you guys can take off your compass if you like, but since the radar does not work in this game, I wouldn't recommend it. You guys can stare off at the compass and it actually shows when people are shooting. Rather than the radar, it only shows when you have a, a UAV up or advanced UAV, so... Honestly, the compass can come in clutch. But if you guys plan on like doing um, thumbnail photos, then this would be very good to turn off. So you guys don't have to like kind of cut it out in Photoshop or anything like that. So if you guys didn't know this existed, now you do. Crosshairs, of course, keep this on. You want to know where your sight is at all times. Hit marker visuals, of course, you want to know when you're landing your bullets. It's already hard enough to see a damn opponent. You don't want to turn this off because you won't even know if you're landing bullets at that point. Damage base, of course, keep on. I don't know why they have this in the settings because it doesn't show players' names unless they're talking about friendly players. Honestly, just add the red names back, bro. Stop playing. Down in this setting, I turned on my server latency and packet loss. You guys don't have to turn this on, but I just kind of like to know if I'm lagging or not and see if I'm having any connection issues. So that's why I turned this on. Uh, I turned on a connection meter as well, which is kind of the same as the one before. And yeah, I could have swore there was something about a square mini map in here. Maybe I missed it. I'm probably gonna try to find it and uh, show you guys. Alrighty guys, I can't find the square mini map. I don't know where the hell it is. I do remember it being here, but if you guys find the mini map square thing, keep it on bro. And the only thing I really touched in here was just turned off profanity filter so I can actually see what people are typing rather than getting the constant star crap. But yeah, anyways, let me know you guys thoughts down in the comments about how good these settings are. And uh, let me know if you guys are enjoying Modern Warfare 2 as of right now. But yeah, anyways, hope you guys enjoyed the video. Subscribe if you're new. Don't forget to slap on the post notifications so you miss the latest and greatest videos. And I'll see you later, guys. Peace.